scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Father, we bless you, the keeper of Israel. All we want is you Take over Take over Till we are consumed By nothing Nothing else but you all we want is you take over take over till we are consumed by nothing one more time from the depth of your heart all we want all we what is you take over? Take over. Take over. Take over. Till we are consumed. Till we are consumed. By nothing. By nothing. Nothing else. Nothing else but you. Father, we decree and declare tonight that your spirit has unrestricted access to every life every destiny and every situation i pray oh god that you will minister so deeply even to your people in the name of jesus we have come tonight oh god give us that encounter in the name of jesus christ Amen and amen. God bless you. Good evening, everybody. Please be seated. Welcome to the house of God. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. I want us to take a minute whilst seated to just thank God for the testimonies the workings of his spirit in this house um, we must never get too familiar with the workings of the spirit in our lives marvelous testimonies in one minute can you lift your voice and say father we are grateful we are not unmindful of your kindness bless his name I will not forget Lord your benefits I will not forget Lord your benefits I bless your holy name I sing your praises forever and I forget, forget not, not his benefits are you praying I will not forget, Lord, your benefits. 
I will not forget, Lord, your benefit. Bless his name for all of the miracles, the signs, the wonders, manifestations of his word, even in the life of his people, a global family. Thank him for the power of his word and the ministry of his spirit. Lord, we do not take for granted your presence. We do not take for granted your wisdom, the outworking of your power in our midst. Thank you. Thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. It's very important that we learn to be thankful whenever you commit to being grateful, you secure the grace for more you cannot receive more cannot have more cannot become more in an atmosphere that disregards what god is currently doing until you thank him for what he's doing you cannot see what he's yet to do hallelujah praise the name of the lord you're all welcome to god's presence i want us to just um join me bless a dear wonderful mother in our midst Mommy Sarah Jibril, God bless you. Thank you so, so much. We honor you, Ma. Thank you so much. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Now, two very important announcements, and then we'll get to the word. Um, this concerns Koinonia Global, a global family. Um, it is my commitment to see how that as much as God grants us grace that we reach the nations of the earth um, I'm committed to this we travel every time as a as a token of our dedication to see to it that every region is able to experience of this grace that God has so lavishly given. Um, and I know that there are many regions that are yet to experience um, this grace at a very, very personal level. I'm saying this because we have um, enormous invitations and requests literally across the globe. And I thought it was only responsible to just say a word or two. I do not take for granted the desire of nations to have me come around your various nations and regions. Uh, in as much as there is only so much I can do, we have just 52 weeks in a year, and no matter how I stretch, there's only so much. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is that this ministry has been so gifted and graced by God that for as long as you can connect by faith regardless the region regardless the place believe me if you can connect by faith with understanding you can receive the blessing right where you are as though you were right here now it's always wonderful if you can make it to visit us or if and when god allows to come to your region but i need to say this that principally your faith in Jesus Christ is what is most important. Not just the presence of the man of God. Are we together now? I will continue to do my best to visit as many regions, but just for us to know, do not feel less part of this vision just because you are far in another nation or another region. I want you to always connect by faith, connect with intelligence and to listen. And even if your time zone or your convenience, your daily activities would not allow you to connect real time, there is always a way of revisiting the teaching and it will come with the same power to bless you. Are we in agreement on that? So that is very, very important. Um, but then I will do my best to visit as many regions as God will grant grace. Honestly, um, I, I want you to know that if I had my way, I wish I could split myself into several pieces of me 
I would be more than glad to even cover the globe. But there is just so much that we can do. Hallelujah. So that these regions do not find offense. And you would notice that there are regions that I've never visited. It is not, it has nothing to do with any prejudices or biases whatsoever. I know that there are pastors who have done their best. Um, several nations we have received several invites without exaggeration i think the u.s alone has over 42 invites you can imagine how many places can you minister in one i mean in one year and all of that so let me say this please please listen this is now for our global family as much as possible we're really working on a system where uh, and i've been sensing this as a burden in my heart my emphasis right now is territorial impact, not just uh, visiting local assemblies and churches. As much as that is, um, it's important to begin to look at the territory. Hallelujah. We may not be able to afford the convenience of visiting, say, instead of visiting 50 churches within a region individually, I think it is more profitable both for me and even for the purposes of God to be able to find an expression that reaches them in a more effective way. So one of the things that we're coming up with is to see how we can build a system that connects these regions so that if and when I am coming to those regions, at least those who are part of this vision within that region can have a way of connecting, number one. And then, if possible, they can even be in partnership with all those who may be bringing me, or if it is a koinonia meeting itself, it makes that very easy. We have so many people across the globe, and you would notice that aside from our social media platforms, we've not created any official system that allows regions to connect. That is because you would have noticed that we do not do anything in this ministry except as led of the Spirit. There is no, um, the secret to what God has done and is doing in our lives is that we only do what we do as commanded more than as desired it must be commanded he said when i sent you lackest thou anything are we learning now so this is very important um we have a few visits this year so for regions in africa especially i know that there are several pastors and groups and even some invites are national invites please do not find offense if we ask you to be patient by God's grace we will be able to structure this in a way that we'll be able to visit these regions by the Spirit of God yours is to keep praying more than praying for the coming of Joshua Selman to these regions to minister directly pray that the purposes of God will find expression if I do not visit your region and yet through alignment, you will give Jesus a chance to visit that region. The job was still done. It is not just about the physical transportation of a man. This is one of the things that we de-emphasize, that the message and Jesus Christ himself is greater than the vessel. It's only a privilege and an added advantage if and when he allows to be physically present. Hallelujah. So for now, it's important to begin to pray and prepare your hearts and um, by the grace of God will structure a way that will be able to connect there are several people across the US Europe several nations in Africa Asia even as far Australia now here's what I want you to do every one of you especially those who are following from diaspora some of you are here you traveled in and you'll be returning I hope that um, keep praying for me I hope that would come up with a system it's been in my mind and it's been my prayer to come up with a system that networks the koinonia global family across those various regions so that number one it makes it easy to be able to reach 
our family there if and when I do visit those regions, whether by a meeting where I was invited or a koinonia meeting, it makes it easy to be able to reach and to bless and then to also keep you posted um, with the activities of the ministry. So that is very, very, very important. To this end, um, I'm going to give you an instruction right now. It applies to all of us, but then particularly to our global family. Hallelujah. We're, we're trying to vet and gauge regions where um, now we're sent everywhere, but we want to begin to place our emphasis for now on regions where God has granted greater access, greater followership, if I'll use that word, even though it's not a word that I would like to use, but then you understand what I'm trying to say. So I know that there are regions where there has been an overwhelming demand, literally at a national level. We see it as a Macedonian call, and it's only fair and honest that if you find this amount of people committing loyal to the faith and the vision, that an opportunity be created to at least visit and be a blessing to the people and even the government of that region or that nation. So um, here's what I want you to do. You will need to help me and help us to reach you. We'll would provide a hashtag for you, Koinonia Global, hashtag Koinonia Global at whatever region you are connecting from. So you can, okay, beautiful. So something like that. For instance, if that is US, so Koinonia Global at, it doesn't have to be US, the name of whatever region, so that we can put it together and then it will help us to now begin to zone the regions to structure the visits. And I believe that it is the grace of God to see that and it is the, um, the will of God for us to strategically now begin to visit these regions and um, so all of you who are here you know your loved ones who are connecting so don't say I'm in Nigeria here you are fine you are sorted out but then at the same time make sure that you help your loved ones across the globe who are connecting so this is what I want you to do you connect to our social media platforms and let us know you don't need to write long grammar I am following from mm -mm. Koinonia Global at your region, right? As a hashtag, and then we'll, we'll collate it together and we'll be able to do our um, findings to be able to know what zones have the greatest participation. It doesn't mean we'll not reach others. We're just trying to structure it so that we are very efficient. Do you think that's a wise step? Hallelujah. So everyone who is part of this family, you are called to participate in this and then help us. Please get the message across. Most of you are on the social media platforms. So let the people know that, um, okay, so that's it. Koinonia Global at, I hope you, you, I'm not sure that the media got that. Hashtag Koinonia Global at, then the region. That's what, that's the instruction. Please correct that so that we'll have that and then once we have it we'll pull everything together and we'll be announcing the regions that will be coming there are other regions already that are scheduled for visit this year and um, by God's grace we'll do justice to reach those regions I'm sure that when we collate everything together as God grants us grace even if not this year perhaps maybe next year we'll would now begin to start regional conferences across these areas i think it's going to be very effective <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord that the dimension of grace committed unto us to the nations would be effectively dispensed in the name of jesus christ now the second announcement which is also an instruction this has to do with pastors and leaders and Perhaps I would say business people, captains of industry. Um, I have literally, without exaggeration, gotten, I would say, tens of thousands of requests by phone through our PR department, the media, and, and then 
physical contact of several pastors who have been praying and asking for a platform to be able to be part of as it relates to the ministry. Um, others for mentorship, others for training, others for equipping, others just to connect to the vision. They believe they are called and connected to the vision. And for a long time, um, it's been a very difficult thing to respond to those. In fact, a few have even misunderstood it, maybe for pride, but um, that's not the case. Again, I would tell you that we are an organized people and we're excellent. We understand the principles of administration, but we also know how costly it is when you go ahead of God. There are many things that are right, but the timing also matters. Wrong timing can make the right thing look wrong. Hallelujah. So there have been several pastors, many of them, I'm sure some of you have even visited here asking things, would there be, ever be a conference? Uh, look, this is an apostolic ministry. Everything you expect in an apostolic and a prophetic ministry is part of the plan. But we move line upon line, precept upon precept. This is a ministry that will remain till Jesus comes. Are we together? So it's important to do what we're doing in a structured and intelligent way, building within it a system that maintains the impact. Instead of carelessly and rashly doing things, and then you do it once, twice, it dies down, I am always pro-longevity. So it is better to think and plan, and where I am in ignorance, I'm not ashamed to collate the intelligence of everybody around. The most important thing is kingdom advancement, not just the individual. Are we together now? So this is very important. So to all of those pastors, please be patient. By the grace of God, um, by miracle service, I want to assure you that I have not been unattentive to your pleas and your requests. It is my job and my prayer to be able to provide whatever support, prayer, impartation, teaching, and to have a platform that brings together a network of all the pastors globally who are connected to this vision for the purpose of mutual sharing, impartation, and so on and so forth. So by miracle service, I'm going to announce and I will give you, I will give you a link or it may be an email so that all of those who want to be part of this, you can reach us. I will supervise the project myself to make sure that we collate this. Then it will now give us grace to begin to, again, structure these networks regionally. And by next year, when we begin all our conferences and other programs, we can now know how to be able to put pastors and leaders conferences to maybe part as part of the calendar. And then we can invite pastors from all across the globe and it will give an opportunity for maturing the body and strengthening of leaders too hallelujah praise the name of the lord so from us to uk here in nigeria across africa everywhere across the globe every pastor every church leader the condition is you must be born again very serious with god and truly ready to serve the purposes of God. We're not playing games. We're very serious people with Jesus Christ. And um, this is one of the reasons why we think and plan because respectfully speaking, there are many people who are not looking for Jesus. They are just looking for a ladder to ride and get greater influence. And we have to create a system to save some of these distractions so that as much as possible, we focus on the work of the kingdom so i believe that is good news to all our leaders and pastors across the globe and um, that will also help so that if and when i am coming to a region the pastors and the leaders within that region will have a system of letting you know and if it's a meeting that is not organized by koinonia itself i'm sure that i should be able to squeeze in even if it's a day to have a moment with the pastors you won't be you, you'll be surprised to know that many years ago, I used to sneak into Ghana for my retreat. And um, there were a group of gentlemen that time. I met them. In, they were in, I think, Accra City campus. 
and I would just have some time with them and mentor them and pray with them and all of that. But, you know, that was just anytime I'm around, I would do that and leave. I have not been in touch with them, but only God knows how mighty. I know one of them that I used to preach for is a mighty man of God right now doing, you know, great things for Jesus Christ um, in Ghana and then I think in, in UAE or so. And so we're happy to see these things. This is what this, this vision is about, to be able to not only teach and bless God's people, God has given us the influence, God has given us the credibility and the track record. He's given us global acceptance and it's only wise and intelligent that we maximize it and create a structure out of it that is able to reach the nations more effectively. If you're in agreement, please shout a loud amen. So in one minute, I'd like us to pray over these two issues and just ask God for grace. Father, thank you for the wisdom to be able to network and connect the Koinonia Global Family across every region represented. Technology has made it so easy to connect to the globe at a more structured level and at a deeper level. Someone is praying. Father, we decree and declare that this would not just be the ritual of a ministry, but that it will sustain within it the same power right here, that from US to UK, from Africa to Australia, China, everywhere, where this vision would find expression, that the God of heaven himself would bless, thank him, for the over 65 nations that already have people who are very structured in their participation, but we know there is more. The goal is the entire globe to be able to make our contribution as far as kingdom come is concerned. Are you praying? Now pray for all the pastors, leaders, business people, particularly people of influence who God has mandated and has sent by his spirit to connect to this grace for their growth, for their understanding, for their excelling even in ministry. I'd like us to pray that God himself will handpick all those who would be part of this. That in the name of Jesus, this that is intended to be a blessing to the globe, and even ministers of the gospel across the globe will not end up being a disadvantage. Are you praying? Finally, pray that the presence of God that has been a signature in this ministry will rest upon every one of these platforms. Maximum kingdom impact. That by reason of this vision, pastors across the globe will be on fire doing mighty things for Jesus, mighty things for the kingdom. Ordinary men turn to signs and wonders. Businessmen, captains of industry, who would find expression at a global scale for the sake of his majesty. Until the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and even of his Christ. Are you praying? Just one more minute. Thank you, Jesus, for that which you are doing. We will keep going from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me whatever you want to do. Lord, you can do through me whoever you want to lift. Lord, you can lift through me whoever you want. To change, Lord, you can change. 
whatever you want to start lord you can start through me whatever you want to end lord you can through me may god find worthy vessels in and through us in the name of jesus may god find worthy vessels through us in the name of jesus hallelujah and listen let me encourage you just help those under the anointing do you know that every one of you when i say you are part of this vision i've taught you here this is not about membership this is an active kingdom participation you must have that mentality whenever you come to church don't feel you are coming to a ministry you are the ministry yourself hallelujah so you must have that mentality don't you think joshua selman is koinonia or some leaders no you are koinonia yourself are we together now so that everything that concerns the vision you see it as an assignment apostle i don't know what i should be doing for god here is an assignment enough to employ you for the rest of your life that you can commit yourself to say the nations must hear the gospel the nations must see jesus revealed and even glorified if you have that mentality then you will see every service as a platform for training not just you coming to casually receive miracles hear the word you give it a student's approach i told you that fans don't get blessed that is just a secular word it's, it's, and it's not wrong in itself the blessing is not for fans it is only those who are connected genuinely and those who would submit to learning they are the ones who benefit so for as long as you have a fan mentality a fan is a well-wisher a student is a learner a son is one who is ready for an inheritance there is a big difference never participate in this vision just as a fan you are not a fan whether you are in europe uk wherever take away that fan mentality and see that god is creating a global vision and i'm being part of it with intelligence knowing that my contribution counts whether in prayer whether in giving whether in your physical presence as an active your influence whatever role you have to play see that god brought you to make this vision work that there is a vacuum that only your gift only your experience only your influence can feel this vision you see is bigger than one man it is impossible no matter how yielded there are some visions that individuals cannot carry individuals only lead the way as this mighty army arises to take that vision and let me tell you this what god is going to be doing with koinonia across the nations i don't say this because um i'm very careful with words but these are things I said many years ago. They are not things I just started saying now. They are things that I've said many years ago. It's an election of grace. It is not something you can end by qualification and all of that. No. So every time you come to church, please listen carefully. Change this mentality. You are not just coming for service to come and hear a man of God. No. Look at yourself as a warrior in training. That you are coming to sit down and you are listening you are an extension of this vision it doesn't matter what church you head it doesn't matter what vision you lead by the time you have that mentality let me tell you this if on account of that which is taught here and the grace that is released here a church in europe a church in brazil a church in kenya catches fire and fans the flame of revival that is koinonia at work it, it does not have to come under the structure of the name we are interested in the impact and the efficiency more than just the name hallelujah 
if you are able to raise your children properly that is koinonia at work in your home if you are able to prosper and excel and rise from an ordinary person to get to a point where you are a multi-millionaire and a billionaire with a kingdom mentality that is koinonia at work there like the precious lady who came here that is koinonia we can't go to the marketplace but what you need is the revelation, the dedication, and the impartation. Hmm. Don't you ever think you do not have what it takes. We do not do this by our strength. No. Yours is to be willing to listen, willing to learn. Leave the rest for God. The impartation the empowerment, creating the platforms, multiplying your influence. It is God who causes men to advance. People don't move just because they want to move. Mm -mm. But if God is behind you, woe betides the force that stands in front of you. Are we blessed? Praise the name of the Lord. I had some time to pray about what I'm going to be sharing tonight. And... While I was praying, my eyes was open to a vision and I saw such demonstration of the power of the Spirit tonight. I saw that tonight's teaching would come with a very strong impartation. I mean, in my, I saw people shaking under the anointing and this is not an unusual thing except that there is like an infusion. There is an impartation of a different kind of strength, a quality it is some it's, it's like a quality of god coming in another dimension and when i saw this i prayed for my own self and i prayed i said lord everyone who must be touched many of you are men of god here what you are learning your members are the mercy of what you are learning holy fire Holy fire, burn upon my altar. From within me, holy fire, burn upon my altar. Shalaska de brandegete baratusida. Parado shala kreti kiti bara de bara. Manda brate ke soda balako shada brate kiti bala. Krata gedu shala kreti katosia. Sabra de gede balando siata. Hala shadi brate ke bara tu siya. You are being strengthened in the inner man. Just for a minute or two, and I'll begin to teach. You reign, you reign, Elohim, you reign, you reign, you reign, Adonai, you reign, you reign, you reign. Na 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 na, yeah na na 
I'd like you to just take a minute or two and just soak in the glory. Lord, we are available. Available. Go ahead. This is how we grow in the spirit. Your influence is all over me. I am under the shadow of your Your power, your grace, your wisdom. Your pruning out every flesh. Giving us strength for the journey. I am under the shadow of your wings. Your influence is all over me. Don't be silent. This is a moment to receive. accessing power in the spirit it takes power to be mighty and to reign you are accessing power in the spirit to them that have no might he increases strength he increases strength Oh, 
Strength in your inner man. Capacity. Built and established in the spirit. Just be patient and don't be distracted. There is a stretching that is happening to your spirit man. Obtaining fire for the journey ahead. Strength for the man of God. Strength for the businessman. Strength for the politician. Strength for the captain of industry. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pay attention to what you'll be learning tonight. Like we did last week. I will teach and then we'll pray. But like I saw in my vision, I want you to be sensitive from the start of this teaching, even up until we share the grace. God is doing something. And whilst the word is coming, God is going to be visiting you uniquely and individually. Make sure your heart is open. For some of you, while the word is coming, healing will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, lifting will come with it. For some of you, while the word is coming, restoration. You will be accessing the grace that will reverse things. Things that should be in your life and are not that God is going to be backdating things and establishing them in your life in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen please be seated and let's begin our teaching mighty God my teaching tonight is from Zephaniah chapter 3 Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17 Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. It says, the Lord thy God, not just the one who is in heaven, the one who is in the midst of thee, is mighty. We'll be looking very briefly at the principles from this topic. That really is the topic as long as it is. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. I'm teaching us tonight on how to access the manifested presence of God um, when it has to do with understanding the dynamics of the presence of God or Lamy day the anointing is coming on that individual or Lamy day I heard that name and the Lord is saying you are entering a new season of the anointing a new season of power and a new season of grace in the name of Jesus a new season of power and a new season of grace it will not be like before God is saying I'm doing something new this will be by his spirit you cannot be effective in today's world 
if you do not understand the mysteries that secure the manifest presence of God in the life of an individual please listen very carefully behind the enviable exploits of the saints behind the individuals men and women who are doing mighty things for the kingdom world over is this mystery of the divine manifested presence of God they have found a way of securing the manifest presence of God upon their lives upon their ministries upon their families upon their visions Psalm 23 please what happens to a man when God is with you what happens to a man if and when you can secure the presence of God he says the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want verse 2 he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters he says he restores my soul he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil why for thou art with me not for the evil has departed for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me it says thou preparest a table for me before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over then it says goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell it didn't say and I will dwell in heaven more than that it didn't say and I will dwell in my home it says I will dwell in the house of the Lord the house of a man is where he stays I will dwell not just visit I will make it my habitation I have found out that provided you are with me there are certain possibilities that begin to manifest in and through my life mark chapter 4 please from verse 35 shabash kuzabri andakata mark 4 from verse 35 media we together please let's walk very fast mark chapter 4 and verse 35 let me pull it up here so that we can save time. Mark chapter 4. It says, And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Jesus now. And when he had sent the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. The Bible says, And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. The Bible says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. Hmm. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, What manner of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him the bible says that the the wind the weather was not favorable the wind was boisterous and then it tells us that jesus was at the other side of the boat asleep and when he got up he rebuked them for their unbelief he said why are you afraid in other words are you not conscious that my presence has an implication why do you act as though my presence does not mean anything have you not learned what happens when I am there? Now that I am with you in the boat, even though asleep, 
it is still me i expected you to find confidence knowing that more than the wind that i was with you in the boat it says for thou art with me that means securing the presence of god is greater than praying for the exit of a negative situation listen very carefully securing the presence of god even if it is in the midst of a negative situation is wiser and more profitable than even praying that the situation should leave because if a, if a negative situation leaves you and you still have not secured divine presence that is only a temporal solution the devil will be able to find cheap access to your life what is the presence of god we talk a lot about the presence of god you've heard preachers talk about the presence of god men and women of god who walk in great power and grace will tell you that behind the exploits is the reality of the manifest presence of god in fact let me start this way as a way of recap i have taught you according to scripture that there are three dimensions of the presence of God as revealed in scripture there are three dimensions let me just say that for the sake of those who will be hearing for the first time the first dimension of God's presence as revealed from scripture I call it his omnipresence write it down please his omnipresence Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 12 the first dimension of his presence is called his omnipresence. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? He says, other versions will say presence. And whither shall I flee from your presence? Next verse. If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are also there. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me we're reading to 12 if i say surely the darkness shall cover me even the night shall be light about me last verse yea the darkness hideth not from thee but the light shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee what a god both darkness in other words when god shows up it does not matter whether it was darkness or light before it doesn't mean anything his presence will make the condition constant the moment he comes both darkness and light are alike to thee the omnipresence of god his ability to be everywhere at the same time now please look up even though we were created in the image and the likeness of god there are three attributes of god he did not share with man it brands him and keeps him in a class all by himself he gave man everything including dominion his image but there are three attributes that god possesses that man does not have number one is called omnipresence man is not omnipresent we cannot be everywhere at the same time number two omnipotent man is not all powerful our authority in this kingdom is derived not generated derived from our relationship you do not have an independent authority outside of your relationship with jesus christ omnipotence number three omniscience or omniscience as others who call it it means man is not all-knowing the Bible clearly says that we see in part and we prophesy in part so if you ever seek to know the difference between God and man as far as the excellency of his person is concerned these three attributes brand God and keep him in a class all by himself man is not omnipresent when jesus became a man he was not omnipresent he could only be in one place at a time 
Hallelujah. I hope you know that even spirits are not omnipresent. Just because they are spirits does not mean they are omnipresent. You read your Bible. There is no record of any spirit being omnipresent. You could have glimpses of reaching into the future like it happened with Elisha when Gehazi was trying to negotiate the gift. He said, did my spirit not go with you? But it did not mean that it was everywhere. Are we together? Man and every other spirit aside from God is location dependent. You cannot be everywhere. It is possible to be in multiple places at the same time, but not everywhere. Are you understanding omnipresence now? It is possible to be in more than a place. I can be here right now and prophetically the spirit of God can lead me to another sphere, another realm. That is a possibility, but not everywhere. And then omnipotence. I am not all powerful. Uh -uh. No man is all powerful. No spirit is all powerful except God. Once have I spoken and twice have you heard that all power, not some, all power. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's important to establish that. Let's define God's presence. What is the presence of God? The presence of God. I'm teaching tonight on the manifest presence. The, the third dimension. Did I talk about the third dimension? Let me hurry up and tie it. I didn't talk about it. That there are three dimensions. Number one is his omnipresence. Just to tie that up. Number two, I call it his Emmanuel dimension. You can call it any name. But I call it his Emmanuel dimension according to Matthew 18 and verse 20. His Emmanuel dimension. The ability to be in a place where two or three are gathered in his name. He said. That everywhere two or three are gathered in my name. That dimension of his presence cannot be drawn by an individual. The condition is you have to be at least two or three people. And then he is in the midst of them. Where two or three are gathered, it has to be in his name. That means if there is a gathering somewhere, an occultic gathering or some kind of gathering, just because humans are there doesn't mean that presence is there. They have to be gathered in his name. He says, I am in the midst of them. The third dimension of his presence is called his manifest presence or his Shekinah. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.